Hi everyone. So I decided to make a video about how I record piano in my video recordings. I figured there might be some people out there interested in exactly how I do it, especially those people that want to do some piano recording of their own. So that's what this video is about. Um, over the past few months with you know some tweaking and adjusting of uh, the audio settings on the equipment that I use, I think I've settled on a recording method that's relatively simple, thank God, uh, but also produces excellent audio quality. So I'll try and share all of that with you guys today and explain what my setup is uh, on how to record piano. And I also plan on doing a, a similar video for how I record uh, accordion, um, in case anybody's interested in that. So the first key part of my recording method is that I like to record audio and video simultaneously through the same camera. And this is different from the conventional way of recording instruments or recording vocals uh, or recording anything that requires high quality video and high quality audio at the same time. The, the conventional way of, of recording is to have two separate sources. You have a camera or a camcorder that gives you your video and then you have a separate sound mixer or sound recorder with microphones attached and all that that gives you your high quality audio and then you take the audio from your separate sound recorder and sync it with the video from the camera to produce a video that has both your high quality video and high quality audio in it. But that method requires two separate sources. Again, it requires a camera for the video and a separate sound recorder or sound mixer for the audio and all the associated hassle <coughs> that goes into configuring each one of those devices. So again, I like to record the audio and the video at the same time through the same device. But as you can imagine, this requires some special hardware which I have right here. <coughs> this is kind of the linchpin of, of my recording method. This is what's called an audio adapter and an audio adapter basically allows you to take the high quality audio output from microphones and put them <coughs> into a form that a camera or a camcorder can accept and incorporate as its own audio used along with the video simultaneously so you can get, you can essentially record video and audio at the same time through the same camera, through the same device. So audio adapters in general are useful because they allow you to take the audio signal from high powered, high quality microphones, which normally should only be going into a separate sound mixer or sound recorder, and they allow you to route that signal uh, through the audio adapter and then from the audio adapter into a camera's audio circuitry board so the camera can basically harness the audio of the microphone directly for its own audio to be used along with the video. And you typically would not be able to use a microphone in conjunction directly with a camera because the audio signal generated by a lot of high quality microphones is way too strong for the audio circuitry of typical cameras and camcorders. Uh, in fact, you might damage your camera if you try to connect uh, a microphone directly to your camera, or even if you tried to connect a, a sound mixer or a sound recorder, you know, with a typical eighth inch jack uh, to the camera, because the audio signal would be strong. Uh, and I've, <laughs> I've actually tried this myself and uh, I, I did manage to get it to work, um, but it produced a lot of hiss and a lot of kind of staticky noise and you could tell that it really wasn't working the right way. So that's why the audio adapters are useful. They, uh, they have uh, XLR microphone inputs and then also just a traditional eighth inch mic audio input for microphones and then the audio adapter modulates the audio and kind of tones it down and controls it so it can be fed directly into the camera without producing lots of noise and hiss and static and kind of overwhelming 
the camera's uh, fragile audio circuitry. Um, this specific audio adapter, in case you're interested, is called the BeachTech DXA HDV audio adapter. BeachTech is kind of an industry standard company when it comes to making audio adapters. They make lots of different audio adapters uh, intended for uh, harnessing high quality audio directly into your camera or camcorder. This particular audio adapter is intended for use with digital camcorders, but to tell the truth, I've used it with my Canon T3i camera, which is the camera that's filming right now, and I haven't seen any issues with it. Uh, but again, in general, audio adapter allows you to take the high quality audio from a microphone or two microphones and feed it directly into a camera uh, to use it with your high quality video. Uh, at, in the same run simultaneously. So that's why they're useful. So before we get too far into a discussion on the specifics of the audio adapter, which I will get into, I'd like to talk about the microphones that I use for recording. So I use two microphones, uh, one condenser microphone and then one dynamic microphone. So first I'll discuss the condenser microphone. This is the Sterling ST55 uh, and this is again this is the condenser microphone. This microphone is uh, really sensitive, really strong uh, and it behaves like an omnidirectional microphone meaning that it picks up sound from all around it um, and also from a pretty far distance away. Um, so it's very sensitive, very high quality but uh, it can, you have to be careful with it because it can pick up audio literally from across the house. Like it'll, it'll hear somebody talking in the next room or if somebody's shouting outside or there's a lawnmower or a chainsaw running or something. It can actually pick that up too. Um, but again, it produces really high quality audio and uh, from, from all around it. You don't have to have, you don't have to have the sound source, you know, sitting right in its face. It's, it's pretty sensitive. Um, the other microphone I use is uh, a dynamic microphone. This is the Shure SM57. This is kind of an industry standard dynamic microphone. It's used in the music industry a lot. Really durable, bulletproof. Um, but again, it's a, it's a dynamic microphone and it's unidirectional, meaning you have to have the sound source sitting as close as possible to this mic uh, as, as you can get. Otherwise, uh, the, the microphone response is going to fall off pretty rapidly as you get further away. So with this microphone, um, the good thing is it won't pick up sound sources that are across the house or you know a chainsaw running from outside or something like that. Um, it won't pick up that background noise, um, but for the same reason you have to have it you know, really, really close to the sound source uh, in order to get high quality audio. So. Uh, so again, this is the Shure SM57, it's a dy dynamic microphone, unidirectional, and this is the Sterling ST55, this is a condenser microphone, it behaves more like an omnidirectional microphone, picks up sound from really far away, um, and I use both, I use both at the same time, I record stereo, I have the, uh, the condenser microphone coming through the left channel and then the Shure uh, dynamic microphone coming into the right channel just to kind of, I guess, produce richer audio so you get two, two different types of sound in the same recording. Alright, so now I'm going to go through some of the details of the audio adapter as well as some of the specific settings for the microphones. So what you see right here is uh, one side of the, the audio adapter. You can see the left and right microphone inputs. They're XLR inputs intended for high quality microphones. Uh, there's the left and the right one. Um, you can see that um, each, each, uh, for each mic input there are two buttons. Um, this button that has the 48V symbol over it, uh, it's right here, and right here for the left one, right here for the right one. This is the 48 volt phantom power supply, uh, which you can turn on if your microphone requires phantom power. 
Um, you can see I have it on for the left input because that's where my condenser microphone goes. That one does require phantom power, but I have the phantom power off for the right microphone input uh, because my dynamic microphone does not require phantom power and certainly you should not turn on phantom power under any circumstances for a microphone that does not require require it uh, because that may damage your microphone. Um, and the second switch that you have um, is the high gain or the low gain so I've got, uh, you can see I've got both uh, left and right mic inputs set uh, to be at high gain um, because I find that high gain gives me the best uh, signal to noise ratio uh, and therefore the best audio quality. You can see there's an out jack here. This is for a standard 8th inch audio cable. This is for connecting your audio adapter uh, to your camera or camcorder. Um, and this right here, uh, the G1 slash G2 label, um, this is a uh, ground configuration so you can switch this one uh, back and forth as you see fit. Uh, it's, not, it's not that important basically. It just uh, different ground configurations may give you more or less uh, noise or static or fuzziness in your sound. So you just pick the one that, that suits you best. So now I'm going to flip the adapter <coughs> and we're going to look at um, the power level controls. Um, here's the power level of, uh, power level or volume control for the left mic input and here's the one for the right input. Um, uh, you can see that uh, above each each power control knob there is a line slash mic switch. I've got both of these switched to the mic position because I've got mics going into the adapter audio inputs. Um, I don't have a sound recorder or a, a line from a digital mixer or something like that going in. If I did, then I would switch it to the line position, not the mic position. Um, this switch right here controls the, uh, the, the status of the uh, audio channel. So right now I've got it set on S, which stands for stereo. Um, I could switch it down to mono if I wanted to. Um, if I wanted all the uh, audio information to go uh, through both uh, both left and right channels, um, but because I record in stereo for the instruments, at least for the piano, um, that's why I have it set on stereo. Um, the power switch is right here in the middle, um, so I can go ahead and turn the adapter on. You can see the light flashes green to tell you that it's on, and then also if we go back here to the input side, you can see that uh, there are indicator lights over each of the phantom power switches uh, for both left and right mic inputs and the one that has the phantom power turned on um, will have the light also turned on as green to remind you that the phantom power is on. Okay, so now um, I'll talk about the, uh, I'll go ahead and turn the adapter off since we don't need it to be on right now. <clears throat> the specific power levels that I use for each of my mics um, are shown right here. So just to give you uh, a feel for how these, these power control knobs work, I'm going to turn them both to their minimum setting. That's what their minimum setting looks like, and I'm going to turn now clockwise on each one. And that's what the maximum power level setting looks like. Uh, and these knobs click as you turn them, just dut, 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 so you can easily quantify uh, how much um, or how little uh, the the volume is for each of the the mic inputs that makes it easier to uh, to adjust and to quantify. Um, but where I like to have these set for piano recording, um, um, if if uh, if we look at the the white line, um, this white stripe on each of the power control knobs, and then pretend that that's the hour hand of a clock, then I would say that. Uh, this is set in the, at approximately the 2 o'clock position for the right microphone and for the left microphone I like to set it two clicks behind the 2 o'clock position um, because the left microphone if you recall is uh, I use my condenser microphone in the left microphone input and that one's a little stronger a little more sensitive um, so I have to kind of dial back the power of that microphone so the audio is more balanced between the left and right channels. Um, so again, I'll, I'll repeat that motion just so you can see uh, <clears throat> see what I do. So for the right microphone, I have it at the two o'clock position. 
However, for the condenser microphone, I will take it and one, two, I'll push it a couple clicks uh, below uh, or less than the, the two o'clock position to kind of dial back uh, the power. Um, this auxiliary opening is for a, uh, it's also for an, an, an eighth inch uh, microphone cable in case you have a microphone that uses a, an eighth inch uh, connector instead of uh, the conventional uh, XLR uh, connector style that most high-powered microphones use. Um, so now what I can do is connect the microphones to the audio adapter so you can see how the uh, the indicator lights um, the indicator lights right here and right here how they function for uh, for each microphone channel. So I'll go ahead and connect the microphone. So here's my condenser microphone going into the left audio input. <clears throat> and here's my dynamic mic going into the right microphone input. So now you can see microphones are indeed connected. And now I'm going to turn, turn the uh, audio adapter on. The audio adapter is now on. And you should uh, start seeing these uh, indicator lights flicker as the uh, as the microphones start sending audio data to the uh, the audio adapter. So, if I'm talking into the condenser microphone, for example, which I'm doing right now, you can see the green indicator light flashing uh, for the left mic channel. Okay. Um, if I raise my voice, or if I shout and I go, woo, then the indicator light will turn red, indicating that uh, the microphone is experiencing the peak signal, uh, that the sound, sound amplitude is being maximized, and you can probably expect uh, to hear some distortion or some clipping or something if, uh, if you find that your, uh, the light is consistently turning red as you're recording into your microphone. Um, and I'll do the same thing with the uh, the right microphone channel. So now I'm speaking into the dynamic microphone, and you can see that the green light is indeed flashing for uh, the right microphone channel now. Um, this mic is a little less sensitive, but I bet I can still get it to turn. Uh, that can still get the light to turn red if I go woo and shout. And you saw it turn red, so that tells us that uh, again I'm I'm. Uh, maxing out the the mic's uh, tolerance for sound. So that's how the microphone, uh, what the, the microphone settings are that I use uh, on the audio adapter. That concludes my explanation of, of how I use the adapter with the microphones and the specific settings that I use. Uh, one more quick note is uh, the settings I discussed here were for intended for instrument recording, excuse me while I turn the power off, um, but if I was to be uh, recording vocals or, or just simple speaking, uh, if you recall I, I speak at the beginning of each one of my piano and, and accordion videos. For those speaking portions what I actually do is I'll set the adapter to mono configuration and I will turn the condenser power level uh, much higher. Uh, maybe set it at about the four o'clock position. Okay, and basically then I will uh, disconnect uh, the, the right microphone, the dynamic microphone, uh, and only use audio from the, uh, the condenser microphone. So I, I find that the condenser microphone is better at picking up uh, voice, and, and, it, and it can produce higher quality uh, voice recording. So. Uh, again, I, uh, for recording vocals, I will set the, uh, the channel status to mono and then turn up the condenser microphone uh, and emphasize the audio from the con condenser microphone um, and put that audio through both channels and basically just ignore the, uh, the right microphone input. Okay, I think that about sums it up for how I use the adapter. All right, now I'm going to discuss the specific audio settings that I use on my T3i camera because the, T3i, the T3i camera does give you 
uh, some amount of control over the audio settings and it's it's good to make sure that you uh, you maximize your audio quality from from all angles possible um, not just on the audio adapter and the microphone choice and positioning but also from what uh, your camera or uh, uh, whatever your video device offers you uh, to use that so I'm gonna turn on the T3i now and show you exactly which settings I, I use so I'm gonna hit the menu button on the T3i um, and now you can see I can scroll through a bunch of tabs across there at the top I'm gonna go to the second red tab and uh, you can see there's a bunch of different options here I'm gonna select sound recording okay and then I'm gonna select the, the sound recording option again and you can see it's set on auto by default but I'm gonna scroll down and select manual okay now you can see the sound recording is set to manual I'm going to scroll down further to recording level and hit enter and now you can see it allows me to scroll left and right and move this arrow wherever I want uh, to control the uh, uh, to control the manual audio recording level so I'm going to scroll back down to this first tick mark here this first tick mark and I'm going to set the manual audio level there um, I found that this this manual audio level is the best for recording piano uh, it's not so high uh, that you hear some hiss and some unwanted noise from the camera um, so it's kind of a lower audio setting for the camera <clears throat> but what that does is allow for uh, the audio from the audio adapter and the microphones uh, to dominate in the audio uh, quality that you get um, you want to kind of minimize the uh, the audio contribution uh, from the camera and maximize the audio contribution from the microphone and from the adapter and this is the best way uh, to do that um, so again set set the manual audio control uh, at the first tick mark and that's what I found works the best for uh, for specifically the the T3i uh, Canon camera that I'm using um, so now I'll go ahead and shut the camera off um, if you don't have uh, a camera or a camcorder that gives you uh, the option to control uh, the audio level manually which most of them quite frankly don't give you that option um, you should still try to do whatever you can to uh, maximize the audio quality using uh, what the camera gives you for example I know a lot of camcorders have something that's called uh, the AGC which stands for audio gain control uh, that you can turn on or off um, definitely try to turn the AGC off um, or put it on low or minimize it um, basically make sure the camera is interfering as little as possible with the audio that's coming from your audio adapter uh, and microphones um, because what the AGC does it's kind of like an auto corrective feature that a camcorder will use um, to try and compensate for any imbalances that it perceives in the sound that you're feeding to it so that this means it'll it'll artificially amplify sounds that it believes are too quiet um, and, and on the other hand it will artificially dampen uh, or silence sounds that it believes are too loud um, which is not good if if you want to be recording a realistic sounding instrument setup uh, or even a vocal setup then you want uh, you know you want everything to be at its normal realistic sound level you don't want the camera interfering with that so that's why you should try to turn the AGC or any sort of uh, camera audio interference uh, off or minimize it uh, if at all possible and the last thing that I'll show um, is just how to connect uh, the T3i camera uh, to uh, the audio adapter itself so you can see there's a port right down here on the um, the lower left edge of the camera you pop this port open you can see there's a slot uh, right here an opening for a standard uh, eighth inch audio cable so I will plug in the audio cable right there you can see it's plugged in and now we'll bring over our trusty audio adapter and uh, this opening right here which is for the eighth inch audio cable I'll just pop that right inside like so okay now you can see one of the cable is in the audio adapter and the other end 
is in the T3i camera, so we've successfully connected them. Uh, and I'll show how to assemble uh, the adapter uh, and the camera, um, you know, with each other and on, t on top of the, uh, the camera tripod um, with the microphones plugged in uh, later in the video. Okay, so now that we've discussed the audio adapter and talked about the types of microphones that I use and the specific settings to use on the audio adapter and then on the camera itself, let's actually put the whole apparatus together and see how it fits together and looks like. So, I start with the audio adapter and the camera. Okay, and you can do this in any order that, that suits you, but this is the way that I do it. Okay, so you've, you'll need a screwdriver or something to actually screw the audio adapter into the camera. And you want to make sure that it's pretty snug, uh, so it sits nicely on the tripod and can maybe take a little bit of tugging from the microphone cables. Okay, so now we've got the camera snugly. Here's the camera, here's the audio adapter. They're snugly attached. Okay, now we're going to take our tripod, our camera tripod, make sure it's nice and level. And now this, the end of the screw here on the, the base of the, the camera holder on the tripod, we're going to screw that into the opening on the bottom of the audio adapter. Okay. And this, this can actually be a little bit tricky because this is kind of a bulky, uh, a bulky object to be putting on a, on a tripod and the weight isn't balanced the best. So it may take you a little bit before you get it to fit nice and snug. Okay, but you should get it to where it's pretty, pretty snug like it feels now. Okay, and finally the last step is to take the tripod with the adapter and the camera attached and put it, this is my rickety setup for the whole, the whole apparatus because I need it to be at a, at a certain height above the piano. And the final step is to take our 8th inch audio cable uh, that I showed earlier when I was talking about the, uh, the T3i camera. Okay, is to take this and connect it from the audio adapter, okay? So I'm going to put it into the, the eighth inch audio cable jack on the audio adapter and then pop open that little pod on the camera, like I'm doing now, and put it there. So now the adapter is connected to the camera. And the final step in terms of connecting things is to actually connect the microphones to the audio adapter. Now, the dynamic microphone will go into the right mic input, and the condenser microphone will go into the left mic input, like so. Okay, so there's what the completed apparatus looks like. And the last thing I'll talk about before we actually sit down and, and play some music and, and compare uh, how this sounds with the audio adapter set up and then without the audio adapter. The last thing I'll say is to look at the mic positioning that I use, okay? So here <coughs> I've got the condenser microphone uh, going into, this is the one that was going into the left mic input. This is the more sensitive one. Um, this, the condenser microphone I've got uh, in front of uh, my upright piano here, and by the way, I, I took out the lower panel of the upright piano to expose the, the strings so the sound can flow out of the piano directly at the mic. So I've got basically a condenser microphone in front of the upright piano, slightly to the right, okay, close to the, close to the opening of the piano, but also kind of close to me so it can pick up my voice for the speaking parts. So that's the condenser microphone. Now, the dynamic microphone, uh, the Shure SM57, that one you actually can't see, but I'll tell you where it is. Okay, this cable is the dynamic microphone, and you can see this cable goes all the way up here, 
goes up to the light, wraps around the light, and then drops behind the piano. Okay, so this cable that I'm holding right here, that's the dynamic microphone hanging behind the piano, directly behind the center post. There's, there's posts behind the piano, they're just part of the, the piano structure, and I've got it hanging directly behind the, the center post behind the piano. So it's smack in the middle um, of the rear section of the piano. And the reason for that is, uh, like I was saying before, the dynamic microphone actually uh, is not quite as sensitive as the condenser microphone. The, the dynamic microphone is unidirectional, so the sound source really needs to be in the mic's face. Uh, for the mic to get a good sound response. So, uh, what I learned in the past couple months is that actually behind the piano is where you get a lot of the sound saturation because uh, that's the, the strings, the piano strings actually send a lot of sound behind the piano and then the sound waves are bouncing back and forth between the piano and the wall, okay, which the piano is up against. So you put, hang the dynamic microphone back there so it's kind of immersed in sound in the sound that's bouncing uh, between the piano and the wall so that's why I've got the dynamic microphone behind the piano instead of out front somewhere because if I put it out front like I did with the condenser it actually would not get as good of a sound response and I did try that before and it wasn't really giving me a good sound response whereas behind the piano it has a pretty uh, strong sound response so again, condenser microphone, front right of the piano, and dynamic microphone hanging smack in the center, uh, except behind the piano, behind the center post. So now let's see what the whole setup sounds like. Okay, so our first test will be just using the camera audio, the camera's built-in audio capability, without the audio adapter connected, without the microphones connected. Again, just using what, what the camera audio has to offer. So I'll play a, a quick, simple song, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and uh, I'll play it using the camera settings, and then we'll switch to the settings with the adapter and with the microphones so you can see the difference. play the same song except with the audio adapter and with the microphones connected. So that concludes my video on how I record piano. I'm hoping you found it useful. We talked about the audio adapter that I use, the microphones that I use, uh, the specific settings that I use on the adapter and then on the camera itself, my microphone positioning, uh, and we finished with a side-by-side -side comparison of how the audio sounds when you're just using the camera's default audio versus the full audio setup with the adapter and the microphones attached. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you were able to understand everything. I know sometimes I get a little long-winded in my explanations, but hopefully it wasn't too bad. And uh, also hopefully you were able to see that uh, there is a big difference when you do use the audio adapter with the microphones. Uh, hopefully that you were able to tell that the sound was a lot richer, the piano sounded a lot more real, the sounds had a lot more depth and it sounded overall just like a higher quality sound uh, compared to the sound that comes just straight from the camera with no frills. If you're just using what the camera gives you, it kind of sounds like you're playing inside a tin can. The sound doesn't sound that realistic. It kind of sounds restrained and maybe muffled a little bit. Uh, whereas if you're using the microphones and the audio adapter, it sounds a lot more realistic. So. 
Good luck to everybody in their in your own recording experiments and definitely let me know if, if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and remember to thank God for everything.